Hey, thanks so much for joining us for another episode of Spirit Anointed Leadership. So blessed to have you with us today. And I'm really excited about the topic that we're going to talk about today, because to be honest with you, I haven't heard any other leaders talking about it. Haven't heard Craig Rochelle talk about it. I love his podcast. Haven't heard him talk about it. Haven't heard Kerry Newhoff talk about it. Haven't heard Annie Stanley talk about it. I don't know who your favorite is. I haven't heard any of those folks talking about the subject matter we're going to talk about today. So my hope is and my prayer is, is that this topic will be something that goes into your spirit and that you'll be able to begin to practice because I believe it's a really important practice for us to follow. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the subject of honor and specifically giving honor to those people that Holy Spirit is asking us to honor. Now, interestingly enough, just so we all know, honor is incredibly biblical. The word honor shows up in God's word 366 times. So One for every day of the year, including leap year. I'm sounding like Rick Warren. Um, But nonetheless, honor is something that's very biblical. As a matter of fact, you find it, uh, the first time you see it is in the book of Genesis, chapter 18, when the three angels visit Abraham. And this is what they say. And since you've honored your servant with this visit, Abraham says, let me prepare some food to refresh you. You find honor at the very end of Revelation very end of the book. Let us be glad and rejoice and let us give honor to him, okay, to God. Paul reminds us that we're to give honor when he says, all honor, glory to God forever and ever. He is the eternal king. So yes, God is to be given honor um, and, and honor is given to angels, but also honor is given to fellow human beings. That's really what I want us to catch here because you can tell the difference between a spirit anointed leader and someone who's not a spirit anointed leader by their ability to give honor. And I wanna ask you a question. When was the last time you gave true honor to someone else? When was the last time you gave honor to someone who has done something either for you or for the church that you serve. You know, the Bible says, obviously, we're to honor in other relationships. It tells us in the Big Ten, honor your father and mother. So this concept of honor is obviously biblical, but number two, it's right. It's just the right thing to do. And and probably the place where we see honor played out best in our culture today is in the area of the military. One of the ways that you see honor played out, I don't know if you've ever been to Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, D.C., but if you've been there, then you've probably watched the changing of the guard around the tomb of the unknown soldier. What are they doing there? They do it in the rain. They do it in the sleet. What are they doing? They are giving honor to our men and women who have fought for our country and who have given the ultimate sacrifice of laying down their lives. Our military understands what it's like to honor. Unfortunately, I think those of us in the church, I I think we have lost this fine art of giving honor. And I think it's something that we should, if you don't mind, rebirth. Well, I think it's something that we need to reimagine ourselves doing. Paul says to Timothy, and I'm going to read out of the Amplified Bible, the elders who perform their leadership duties well are to be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. So if I'm a lay person listening to this podcast, this means I need to look for opportunities to honor my pastor and those who serve us at the church. I need to consider how can I show them honor? How can I be respectful? How can I be loving? And I'm not just talking about once a year where we give someone gratitude because it's Pastor Appreciation Month. No, I'm talking about honoring them throughout the year with my words of affirmation. I'm I'm talking about giving them honor through a written note or through a little gift or through a much deserved time off, time away. I'm talking about making sure that they are compensated fairly. And we in the GLR can help you with What does that fair compensation look like? Because again, Paul says to Timothy, the elders who perform their leadership duties well are to be considered worthy of double honor. And by the way, when Paul writes that, he's actually talking about financial support. So another thing I can do as a lay person is I can make sure that my pastor's family is being honored. Is my pastor's family being taken well care of? 
Um, that's a way that we can honor those who serve us. But that's if I'm a lay person. Now I want to talk to pastors for a minute. Pastors, I want to encourage us to honor those who have come before us in our churches. Uh, for instance, the former pastor or people that served on the board for a long time. The people who have paved the way for us to enjoy the ministry that we're able to have now. Have you ever honored them and have you honored them well? I had the privilege of basically taking a master's class when John Maxwell came to be our senior pa pastor and the way that he treated Orville Butcher. The way, and Orville Butcher was the, the founding pastor of the church that I grew up in. He'd taken the church from uh, planting it to running about a thousand people in San Diego. And then John Maxwell came to be our second senior pastor. And th there wasn't a month that went by in the first five years when John wasn't saying something positive from the stage about our founding pastor. What was he doing? He was honoring or he was honoring the former leadership. And what did that do? Well, what that did is that that gave credence to his own leadership. Not only did people think more highly of our former pastor, they thought more highly of John because they realized it wasn't all about John, that John knew it wasn't all about himself. And I tried to mimic that behavior when I came to be the district superintendent of the West Michigan district. I, I wanted to honor my predecessor, Mark Orvet, the very best I could. Mark had started a multiplication movement here. That was awesome. And then when we combined um, in this region, I wanted to honor Richard Meeks. I wanted to honor Tom Schmidt. I wanted to honor Dan Bickle and Al Garaki, the, the former district superintendents of the former districts, the very best I could, because those people were worthy of honor. Scripture says they're worthy of double honor. And I want to do my very best to make sure that we understood that they are worthy of our honor and th that it's so easy to do. It is so easy to do. It is not complicated, but it is so worth the time and the effort because it sets a culture. And in our culture today, honor is not something that we do very well, that we do very much. As I've already said, basically the only people that are doing a great job of honoring in our culture today is the military. But God has called the church to be the place where we honor the very best. Now, um, you know, genuine honor can look different in different places. Um, maybe your church is going to go through an anniversary and you bring back the former pastor or former pastors and you honor them in that way. Um, you know, typically honor is going to cost you a little bit. It's going to cost you some breath from your lungs and it might even cost you some finances, but that's okay. Because here's what I know. I know that when we create a culture of honor, what ends up happening is, is just that everybody is honored in that situation. Um, not just the former pastor, but volunteers. What does it look like to truly honor volunteers? Now, I celebrate all day long that a lot of us now are doing volunteer appreciation dinners, which is great. Let me let me help us here for just a second. My, my dear wife, um, she doesn't really want to celebrate Valentine's Day. Um, she doesn't really want in a huge way to celebrate Mother's Day. I mean, it's fine, get her a card maybe, but that's what she says to me is, honey, as my husband, what I would prefer is that you just bring me flowers throughout the year. We all know that what happens is that the florist like ups the price by 10 times right around Valentine's Day. And, you know, we get that. So just like, give me flowers throughout the year, not just on one day. What is she saying? She's saying, honey, honor me throughout the year. So what I want to say about a, a, a volunteer appreciation banquet or time or whatever, that's great. Praise God. I'm glad that you're doing that. My question is, is it, is it baked into the culture of your church that you honor people and that you honor them well? Do you honor them from stage? When someone does something really cool, do you honor them from the stage? Do you say thank you? If someone has served in, uh, as, a, as a worker in children's ministry for a number of years, do you honor them? Do you thank them? Do you appreciate them? Uh, are those the kinds of things that just come out naturally? You know, I, I gotta tell you, I just think honor makes such a big difference 
not only in the culture, but let's face it, it makes a huge difference in the life of the person that we're honoring. When I was growing up, um, I had uh, someone in my life by the name of Derek, and Derek was kind of a mentor in my life, a long distance mentor. I didn't get to spend a whole lot of time with him, but I'll never forget as an adult, I was, um, oh, I, I was probably 50 years old or something. And I ended up having dinner with Derek and his wife, and I'd written uh, this document about how his influence in my life had made such a big, big impact on me. And I sat across the, this dinner table, we're at a restaurant, people all around, you know, whatever. And I read this to him and I'm, I'm crying a bit while I do. And I looked in his eyes and I knew in that moment what a huge difference that was making to him. What did that cost me? It cost me the, the price of a meal and it cost me about an hour of my time to write that. What did it mean to him? I think it was priceless to him. I had two people in the role that I'm now blessed to serve in as district superintendents who made a huge impact on my life. A guy by the name of Isaac, another guy by the name of HC. And I happened to be at a, a meeting of district superintendents when both those individuals were retiring from their positions. And, um, and I asked the district superintendent who was kind of planning that whole time, if they planned to do anything and it wasn't on their radar at all. So I asked if I could actually come and um, while I was there and just read something about both, both those gentlemen. And I was given a prayer and they said, sure, and I did it. And I just got to tell you, there wasn't a dry eye in the place. All I did was I honored leaders who had gone before me, who had paved the road for me. And again, didn't take a whole lot. It didn't take any money. It just took the time for me to write something and then give it. So here's the question I want to ask. If indeed honor is biblical and honor is right and honor is easy, are we giving honor? Are we giving honor? Have you thought about who you're giving honor to? And, and let me just say one final thing here. Um, honor needs to go both up and down. We don't just give honor to the leaders that are serving, uh, you know, who have come before us and maybe honor to our leaders, but we also have to give honor to those who work with us on our teams or the volunteers that work with us. So if, if I happen to be a senior pastor or I'm a boss and I have people that are working for me, I'm asking myself the question, am I honoring them? Are my actions honoring them? Do they feel like they can come to me with suggestions and ideas? Do they feel like they can come in and say, Chris, you know, when you said this or when you did that, I'm not sure that it really paid the dividends you wanted to pay, or maybe even m more difficult than that. Do I create a, an environment where they can come and have a crucial conversation with me, where they can come and speak the truth and love into my life? Am I honoring them? Am I dignifying them in such a way that they know that my door is open and they can come and have a conversation with me, even a corrective conversation when that needs to happen? See. What I find is, is that the best leaders are spirit anointed leaders and the best leaders are secure enough to give great honor. Weak leaders, insecure, insecure leaders, they can't give honor to anybody else because they've got to take it all themselves. But capital L leaders, they give honor all the time, all the time. How they treat other people, um, is marked through honor. I, you know, I was blessed a couple months ago. Um, I was at an event and got to meet uh, a gentleman who happens to be the captain of the George H.W. Bush aircraft carrier. It's a nuclear carrier in the Navy. And uh, I got to meet the captain. And uh, he and I spent about 40 minutes together as I just asked him all kinds of questions and was doing my best to learn from him. But here's one of the great things I watched him do. He happened to have five seamen with him of different ranks. Uh, some were brand newbies in the Navy. Others had been in, the, in for a while. And I'll never forget, I, as he introduced me to them, the honor that he gave each of these individuals was off the charts. Like he recognized how important their role was and he wanted me to know about it. And in the same way, I want to treat the people that work for me and around me I want to treat them with honor by giving them words of affirmation, by listening to their ideas, by getting to know them and what's actually important to them. I honor someone by getting to know them and what's actually important to them, by giving them opportunities, 
by treating them with appropriate amounts of respect if they're someone from the opposite sex and by paying them financially the very best I can possibly pay them. That's part of honor as well. Again, honor makes such a huge difference in an organization. Honor is biblical, it's right, it's easy, and it goes both ways, both up and down. So here's the thing. I, I wanna say this um, because at last, because it's the least important. If we honor others for all the reasons I've mentioned here, if we just set a culture of honor, then what I find is that eventually it'll come back around to us. Now, if we do it with a selfish motive, then shame on us. That should not be our heart or our spirit at all. But if we honor people, what I find is, is that, and we set a culture of honor, then eventually people will honor us. And that's a great thing. It's not why we do it, but it is, if you will, it's just kind of a subsequent thing that happens. Again, it's not why we do it, we do it because it's the right thing, because it's biblical, because it honors the other person. That's why we do it. But when we set a culture of it, one of the fringe benefits is, is that it ends up coming back around and blessing the daylights out of us most of the time. So, spirit anointed leaders, I wanna encourage us. How are you doing at honoring people? When's the last time you spoke really highly of people that have come before you? When's the last time you spoke really highly of staff and volunteers and folks like that, that make ministry happen? I gotta tell you, if you think the Spirit Anointed Leadership Podcast happens because of me, you're dreaming. It happens because of Josh, who I've had on the podcast, JB. It happens because of Michelle. It happens because of Allison. Other people that actually do all the legwork for this podcast, they're the ones that do all the work. Are we honoring the people around us that make ministry happen? I hope so. Because if we do, first of all, the Bible says they're worthy of honor, but also because when we do, we set a culture that affirms and honors people in ways that I think are really godly. So Spirit of Northern Leaders, let's go do that. Let's go honor people today. Hey, would you do me a favor? Would you please subscribe to this? Would you share this? Maybe you want to share it with someone to say, hey, I thought of you today because I want to honor you. I want to honor you for the way that you have built into my life. I just want to say thank you. This is one of the ways that I want to say thank you to you for building into my life. Follow us on this podcast, if you would, please. Let's go be men and women who honor others as spirit-anointed leaders. Have a great day. Hey, 